There are a couple of really positive things that I'm that we start to see happening. Um, so one is we definitely see much more awareness, definitely more awareness around BIM, but about digitization in the construction sector as such. That's good. We also see that the market and the supply chain is now starting to build the capacity to deliver projects in BIM, etc. So we see more and more people adopting new technologies and new processes. And also, and that's personally, I think that's really important that we now see a wider adoption of digital technologies, not only in design and construction, but also now in operation and maintenance. So what we call the whole life cycle of an asset, mm -hmm. that's now slowly starting to happen. So that's all the positive things that I'm seeing. Okay. Uh, there are a few less positive things as well. Still, I do see a disconnect uh, on projects when some people say, okay, are we doing the project in the traditional way or are we doing it in a BIM way? Mm -hmm. and that shouldn't be after such a long time. We should see we deliver projects and we adopt new processes, new technology, digital technologies. We, we have a different way of how we produce data, how we manage data. But there shouldn't be that disconnect any longer between, oh, are we doing it in the traditional way? Mm -hmm. It doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, it's just if somebody is uh, saying or decides to say, we're now going to do BIM. So um, this means um, what processes and steps are evolved in that decision, for example. Yeah, and that's exactly where a lot of people that embark on this oh, journey to we BIM. We do it now. We do, we it, do now. it now. Fair <laughs> enough. That's all right. It's a decision. That's good. What do I do? And then, what kind of program? Or yeah, <laughs> exactly. And then that's what usually happens. So what, what software do I need and uh, which training do I need mm. to send my, my staff to? Okay, fair enough. But then you start talking about, so how do you change your existing core processes in your business? Mm -hmm. How do you adopt your maybe integrated management system? How do you ensure governance over data, security over data? Um, and and uh, procurement uh, rules, for example, and all of that, when you start talking to people about, so what do you do about that? And they look at you completely blank and say, why? I want to do BIM. What's this to do with procurement? Well, a lot, especially when you're a client, when you're client side. So, and that's, that needs to happen as well. And a lot of people tend to overlook all these changes which are, which are required when we really want to move into a digital way of procuring projects, delivering projects and operating assets in the future. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, um, Eka, ever since I know you, you've talked about BIM, integrated BIM very early. Um, you gave lectures um, and you gained really experience with it. And uh, yeah, what do you think makes BIM the only alternative? And why does only BIM lead the construction industry in the future? Depends a little bit. My answer is my understanding of BIM is really, it is part of digitizing the entire sector. It is really not just a tool for design and constructing something. It's bigger than that. And if we think of BIM as a very standardized way, then it forces us to think about standards, processes, and about the whole lot. And that's why I think we have to go through that first. And that's why in many countries, including in Germany, uh, the EU BIM task group, etc., we always um, take this phased approach and we say, okay, let's define a first level of complexity and just ask and start with a selection of things that we do properly and we do all together before we move on to the next level of complexity. Mm -hmm. And I think this is that's exactly the right way to do it. And BIM, as I say, forces us to do it in a more structured way, in a more standardized way, so that we can take the entire supply chain and market along on that journey. And we don't lose people because we are doing it in a very unorganized way, maybe dominated by very few big players in the market mm -hmm. and lose all the smaller ones. Wow. OK. So, um uh, last year, um, you talked about breaking down the silos, also die, die Silos öffnen, die Daten vernetzen. No? We talked about that last time at Institute 2020, where we were only on the digital platform. And uh, has that improved since we talked last year? That's really an interesting one. And that topic is far too big to see major improvements just within yeah. one year, especially when you can't travel and you can't really see what's happening. Um, still, we do have or many organizations operate very much in silos and they have their data locked up in silos. 
But at the very beginning of our conversation, I talked about the exciting next step for LockLab, and that's exactly what we are doing. We're trying to provide a 3D model as the integration basis of all the siloed information that sits within various systems, could be real-time data, sensor data, um, your work orders, your, your asset management data. It's always locked away somewhere. And by integrating that and giving people a secure but also intuitive access to that data through a contextual 3D model which provides spatial information and a lot of context, where is it, what is not similar to GIS, but now in a, in a proper three-dimensional world. Mm -hmm. That has a massive, ma incredible power to unlock these silos and create the horizontal mm -hmm. play, uh, layer and platform. Okay. So you will bring the revolution for it on the market on your Definitely. <laughs> Next year, same time, same wow, place. Wow, great. <laughs> um, Eka, uh, you hosted also this morning a BIM session at the Intergeo conference. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, what is the role of geodesy or geoinformation here at Intergeo in the context of BIM? Again, thinking about, let's say, in railway, mm -hmm. you create a BIM model of uh, track and the uh, uh, signals, etc. That is somewhere in the world. So you, again, you need the context, you need the geodata. Where is this? And, and what's around it? So we need to see that all the data, talking about silos earlier, so we need to see all that data coming together. And geoinformation plays such an important role because all the survey data that we're receiving, everything else, that all needs to come together so that the design but also the digital twins, which we are now creating increasingly. Just look around here at Intergeo. So many companies are now doing reality capture, etc. And that all comes together on the back of geospatial information and data. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Ilka, for joining us here at Intergeo TV. I wish you really lots of fun at Intergeo and good conversations. And looking forward to see you <laughs> next time with your revolutionary uh, three digital, digital twin from Luxx like Consulting. Thank, Thank you very you much. Denise. It's been a pleasure. <laughs>